to commercials that peddle everything from tennis shoes to alcohol. Join the party. From the soundtracks of movies and television series to the pulsing rhythms that reverberate in our health spas. Everything today seems to march to its rhythm. Join Jack now. Perhaps the only thing more notable than rock's pervasiveness is the manner in which it helps shape the hearts and minds of the world's youth. As Dr. David Elkin noted in his book, The Hurried Child, one of the most underestimated influences on young people today is the music industry. Citing again the National Review, Rock's sheer pervasiveness makes it the most profound value shaper in existence today. Unless you are deaf, it's virtually guaranteed that rock music has affected your view of the world. From the manner in which young people dress, to the way they view and understand the key issues of life, little escapes the pale cast by rock's big sound. And it's no wonder. Young people wake up to it, drive to it, play to it, study to it, and go to sleep to it. Studies show that between the 7th and 12th grades, the average teenager will listen to and watch 11,000 hours of rock music and rock videos, more than twice the time they will spend in class. As Dr. Alan Bloom noted in his best-selling book, The Closing of the American Mind, nothing is more singular about this generation than its addiction to music. Incredibly, despite this unprecedented power and the mounting evidence that rock's influence can be less than positive, most people have never stopped to consider what is really going on in and through contemporary music. Why is music so powerful? How does it affect us? What is its source? And to where is it leading us? What do you want to do with your life? I want to rock. Throughout the ages, wise men have noted music's profound impact on its listeners. For example, over 2,000 years before the birth of Christ, the musical systems of China were both highly developed and central to its society. It was to this that the philosophers directed much of their attention. Understanding its intrinsic power, they carefully checked their music to make sure that it conveyed eternal truths and could thus influence man's character for the better. To this end, Tradition states that one emperor, by the name of Shun, would monitor the health of each of the provinces of his vast kingdom by simply examining the music they produced. Coarse and sensual sounds indicated a sick society, one in need of his intervention and assistance. Two thousand years later, the Greek philosopher Plato echoed the sentiments of Emperor Shun when he said, when modes of music change, the fundamental laws of the state change with them. In his famous work, Laws, Plato could have been writing about our modern age when he stated, Through foolishness they, the people, deceived themselves into thinking that there was no right or wrong in music, that it was to be judged good or bad by the pleasure it gave. As it was, the criterion was not music, but a reputation for promiscuous cleverness and a spirit of law-breaking. Plato's contemporary, Aristotle, noting that music has the power to form character, wanted to see it actually regulated by the state, an approach, by the way, of which I and the producers of this video are not in favor. Now, moving up to the present century, Vladimir Lenin, the co-founder of communism and one of history's greatest experts on subversion and revolution, said, one quick way to destroy a society is through its music. Changing laws, forming character, and toppling societies. Most of us are not used to talking about music in such expansive terms. To understand this magnitude of impact, we must consider both the nature of music and man 
and how music affects us in body, soul, and spirit. Given the materialistic philosophy that marks this present age, it's surprising that more attention has not been given to the many profound ways sound and different musical forms can affect the physical world. For example, research has found that shrill sounds of sufficient volume can congeal proteins in the liquid media. So a soft egg placed in front of a speaker at some of the louder rock concerts can midway through the concert become a hard-boiled snack for the weary headbanger. Does anybody have any salt here? Moving from proteins to animate objects, repeated experiments have shown that plants respond positively to classical forms of music, actually growing and flowering faster than if there was no music at all. Conversely, more dissonant forms of music, like heavy metal, can actually retard growth and even kill the plant. Of course, humans are much more complex than plants, but it still makes one wonder what this type of music might be doing to us. As Dr. Adam Nisti, a musicologist who studies the effects of music upon people noted, it's really a powerful drug. Music can poison you, lift your spirits, or make you sick without knowing why. As mathematics is a universal language of the mind, music is the language of the heart, what the great composer Robert Schumann called the perfect expression of the soul. Biblically, when we talk about the soul, we are speaking of the human personality and its three component parts, the mind, the will, and the emotions. And it's here where we begin to see music's real power take hold. In the realm of the mind, there is mounting evidence that certain kinds of rock have a negative effect on one's ability to think and learn. Studies at two separate universities, for example, have found that rats have a much more difficult time learning to pass through a maze if they are subjected to hard rock music. On the emotional level, few would deny music's power. Its ability to influence and enhance moods is in fact one of music's greatest attractions. What most people are not aware of, however, is both the extent of this influence and the ease with which they can be unconsciously manipulated. As Eddie Manson, Oscar-winning composer and one-time president of the American Society of Music Arrangers has said, we manipulate people like crazy. Every film composer mixes his experiences with a talent for musical manipulation and then projects that Machiavellian power gut to gut. Moving from the gut to the brain, music is also a powerful encoder, a term in psychology for something that helps determine the way we perceive and think about the world. In other words, music has an inside track to the subconscious levels of our minds. This truth is even physically suggested by the fact that the auditory nerves are the most predominant of all the human senses. Research done at Stanford University confirms not only this predominance at a physical and subconscious level, but also in an area that is perhaps the most uniquely human of all. That is, in the area of transcendent experiences, what the researchers termed thrills. They found that the most powerful stimulus for evoking thrill-like sensations in their subjects was music. Musicologist David Tain anticipates Stanford's discovery when he wrote in his book, The Secret Power of Music. Music is the language of languages. It can be said that of all the arts, there is none that more powerfully moves and changes the consciousness. Changing one's consciousness is what David Crosby meant when he told Rolling Stone magazine that through just his music, he could alter his audience's value systems and, in effect, steal them away from their parents. And Crosby is not alone. Perhaps rock's greatest genius, Jimi Hendrix, told Life magazine in 1969, I can explain everything better through music. You hypnotize people to where they go right back to their natural state. And when you get people at their weakest point, you can preach into the subconscious what we want to say. 
In recognition of this transcendent power, Eddie Manson went on to share a sober warning. Music is used everywhere to condition the human mind. It can be just as powerful as a drug and much more dangerous because nobody takes musical manipulation very seriously. As we just saw in the quote by Jimi Hendrix, music is a spiritual thing. And it's in this realm of the spirit 